Hello guys, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Nerd video series on hashing because we are going to have different parts. So this is going to be part one where I'll just give you the introduction part because it is little big, not that big, but at least we can have three, four videos in this. So I'll divide this into three, four parts. So this is part one. Now let me set a stage for you so that you can understand this whole thing. The stages like you have these numbers like from 1 to let's say maybe 50k okay these many numbers are there randomly available numbers in an array okay and if I tell you whether just search maybe this 2536 this number is available in this array or not you have to search this entire array and the complexity would be order of n, correct? This is not sorted, you cannot apply binary search. You can claim that I can sort it in and then apply there this search, but no, that's not what we are looking. To understand this even more better, just think like, these one to 50k numbers are not directly available to you in an array. They will be coming from some stream or some function or some thread to you you are here and they are coming okay or they are getting just generated in this loop or somehow some randomly some numbers are coming so you have this data like in mixed form 31 maybe 100 maybe 1k and then maybe 2 comma 1 so like this data is scattered and if i tell you like search maybe 50k then if 50k is available in the end, maybe this is the whole list and 50k is in the end, just assume, then you have to search this whole array. That's not what we are looking for. Is there any way we can map this 1 to 50k data in a smaller group or smaller clusters so that if I tell you that, okay, you have to search 2, then you instantly know that 2, okay, I'll get that in this cluster or in this cluster or in this cluster. Just by doing some operation on this 2, you should be able to know, okay, where I should have stored 2 if I had 2, where this 2 would go, okay? Then it's like we can break this whole very bigger list into smaller, smaller chunks and then let's suppose if I'm telling you just in case this is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. They are just index. Okay. They are just index. And if I tell you, okay, 2, no, look, don't look at this 2, 2 is very simple. Let's look at this 31. And I told you, right, whenever I ask you, like, do you have 31? You will get that 31 and somehow you will do some operation on this and you will get that index where you have to search this 31 whether I do have it or not then that operation could be very simple that let's suppose I am doing this with this mod of 10 whatever the answer is answer is going to be obviously 1 then I will store this 31 inside this 1 index so I'll have this 31 here that's it like this I'll keep storing this whole data like 25 25 modulo 10 is going to store into this fifth index cluster. So this cluster is not there. So we'll store this into fifth cluster. And this is 100, right? So 100 modulo division 10 is going to be zero. So I'll store this 100 here. Now, this is storing part. When you was getting data, you stored all these data into these different clusters. Now, if I ask you, dude, do you have 25? get me 25 then you don't have to search this whole list okay because this 25 can be at any location in this array but here after doing this operation 25 modulo 10 you know the index now that where you would have stored it the index is 5 so you will directly go to this cluster and you will start searching in this and you will find that okay 25 is there so this is what hashing is you will map your data with some key 
which gets generated from your data itself okay 25 was the data and you just generated this key so that you can store this data in this index so this was like where you will store the data let me explain you with the smaller example it will be very helpful now let's suppose you have 0 to 99 data okay this is your data and with the same technique you can have these indexes correct like 0 to 9 we can have so these are the indexes and let's suppose you have 15 coming 15 modulo division 10 answer is 5 you will store this 15 here now let's suppose 25 is coming I'm taking a very typical case where you have a collision here I'll explain collision in different video with full example like because there are different collision handling techniques but this is like the basic one so I'll go for this so the answer is still 5 now see 25 and 15 both should go to this location now the problem is as you have taken this index and array you can only keep one element in this right so what we can do instead of storing values here what we can do we can store the address of a linked list let's suppose we have this linked list and you had inserted 15 and 15's address was maybe 1000 so you'll store 1000 here okay and this is null and next time 25 is coming what you will do you see that okay 25 I have to push whatever is there this is 1000 right initially everything is initialized with null so here we have 1000 what you simply do you have to insert 25 right so 25 is a node and this data is I mean address of 25 is 2000 let's say and this is null now what you will do you will initialize this thousand inside this okay so this will go here so basically you are saying 15 is getting next of 25 and 25 will come here so basically it would look something like this okay we have 25 inserted 15 becomes next of that and if maybe this time 5 is coming 5 modulo 10 then the answer is still 5 so this 5 should go at this again so now what you will do you will make this 25 the next of 5 okay so it will like 5 and this guy would point this guy and then we'll start pointing here and let's say this is 3000 so this is how it is going to be and we'll break this link so 3000 which is this one now 5 is pointing to 25 25 is pointing to 15 so this was the collision case when there is a collision how you will avoid that and this is called chaining you have chains of the nodes and you handle with the chains so you store data in a chain to handle collision so you have used extra space see whereas you already had this much of space so you did not occupy this you created extra space in order to store this data so sometimes this technique is good sometimes it is not and remember this this is chaining you're chaining the data now see with this smaller example we understand that we have 0 to 99 meaning total 100 elements are there okay and if we are not using this technique and if I'm asking you like do you have this number maybe n then you have to search this whole array I mean maybe that number is lying in the end so you have to find that again and again even if that number doesn't exist you have to still go till the end so from 0 to 99 you always have order of n complexity which is a pretty high complexity whereas if you have this technique whatever the number is you just divided that with 10 so we have n is divided by 10 so how many numbers are there 100 so 100 divided by 10 you just have to search 10 times at max because if this every index is full meaning what everything like 0 to 99 is filled then only at max you have to find 10 times to just say that okay something is available or not whereas here it was like n which was 100 so this is very costly right so this was just the introduction I have not used uh, words like what is hash key what is hash functions and all that 
I'll explain that in future videos because you need some foundation to understand those things. Okay. And this is one of the collision de detection and avoidance technique. And we have different techniques also. We'll discuss them in future videos. So till then, take care. Bye bye. I'll see you in the next videos. Thanks for watching guys.